As the sun rose on the eighth day of spring, it was finally warm enough to plant our crops. We still have so much food from last year, and the future is looking up. On the ninth day of spring, we started replanting our crops and cutting stone blocks to finish our wall. Minoka mined out the other side of the rock we had made our home in to accommodate future houses. I can't wait for some peace and quiet. Alpaca snores like an elephant. Early the next morning, Minoka went into a murderous rage because we ran out of psychite. Alpaca arrested him and threw him and threw him in our prison shell cell to chill out. Around sunrise, we received a message from the Empire that they would send us a man named Star if we would build them a monument. We accepted. We can always use the extra hands, and he seems like a sensible guy. In the meantime, Viper was working on our animal pen. It would be nice to have some livestock, but I haven't really seen any good options around us. At midday, Minoka went into a catatonic fit. Not too worried about it right now. We still have plenty of food, so he can get his feelings out and contribute to us later. The rest of us focused on planting the fields, and that continued into the next day as well. On the twelfth day of spring, I convinced Lobby of the truth of raidism. He rejoined our tribe joyfully. Later that day, a wild impid woman named Kaylin wandered into our territory, so we decided to tame her and offer her a place in our tribe. Pig was our best tamer, so we signed him to the case. That night, we were attacked by feral guinea pigs. Lobby got pretty messed up before we could help him, but other than that, everyone's okay. The next day, we spent recovering from the fight. Most of us were fine, but Alpaca got an infection. In the afternoon, Pig digged some work on our wall, and later Viper joined him. In the evening, Pig tried to tame Kaylin, and she attacked him. We subdued her and ended up tending to her outside, and because of that, she joined us. Unfortunately, Alpaca's infection got worse, and she died. We buried her and tried to have a funeral right away, but it was too hot, so we had to wait until after dark the next evening. On the last day of spring, we finished the wall when a mare attacked me. Viper and Pig killed it, and I managed to recover. On the first day of summer, we completed the Empire's Bond Monument and Star arrived. He's not an amazing addition, but he's good enough and is another set of hands to help out. Plus, he's attractive and doesn't start fights. On the second, we finished flooring our chapel, and we got started on the braziers. The next day, we had a fire in the hayfield, but thankfully we were able to put it out before it spread. On the fourth day of summer, we tamed a herd of buffalo, but uh, unfortunately, we were unable to tame the male, so we just have females right now. We also had another fire in the cotton field this time, but it was raining, so it wasn't that big of a problem. On the 5th, we started building a storage building. Our current one is too small for what we are producing, so we need a larger one. We're still trying to tame the male muffalo, and we are still unsuccessful. On the 6th, we continued to work on the storage building and started work on a prison. We intend to start capturing people who raid us and converting them to the truth of raidism and have them join us. We only have one married couple among us, and that's nowhere close enough to have the next generation. Star ended up having a crisis of belief, so we arrested him and began convincing him to join our faith. This all continued on the 7th, and we also started building some individual houses for them. Ourselves. I can't wait for them to be finished. We never did manage to tame that a male buffalo, and now they've left the map. We'll have to wait until more pass by. On the 8th, Star converted to our faith and we released him. We also had our first harvest of hops on this day. Even though we don't know how to make beer yet, I was hoping it would come to us when we had them, but that was not the case. On the ninth day, we received word that a ruin with information about our holy relic Kelzor Zanmor was nearby. On the 10th, Minoka had a crisis of belief. We're almost ready to floor and finish our houses. Piglet slipped to me that once he and Viper have a place of their own that they want to have a child. It's hard to contain my excitement. I've always wanted to be an uncle. Late that night, we were raided by three people from Kusad, and then just a few hours later, three people from the Alliance of Canby, who was mad at us for attacking one of their camps. The two groups ended up running into each other, and Kusad forced Canby to retreat. 
Early in the morning, on the 11th, Kusad began their attack. We defended our base at its entrance. One of them managed to sneak past us and set our fields on fire, while we attacked the other one. We ended up winning, but Minoka and Star were really badly hurt by our poor defensive strategy. Later, Lobby collapsed as well, and ended up getting an infection in his kidney. Caitlin was shaken up by the events of the day and decided to return to the wild. And then that night, I sold all but one of the muffalo for a book on farming and a breeding pair of camels. On the twelfth day of summer, Lobby left us. His infection got the better of him, and now he has passed on. We had his funeral at midnight, and it was lovely. It makes the loss easier to handle, knowing he was sent off so nicely. On the 13th, we had to harvest the corn early because we were running low on food. We finished the harvest on the 14th and celebrated by building more skull spikes. On the 15th, we worked in our fields. Our crops are our lifeblood in this moment, and we must tend to them well. A rat attacked me, but I fought it off, and that was the end of summer. On the first day of fall, we continued working in the fields to harvest our crops. We ended up with a good amount of cotton that we can use to make clothing for the coming winter. Most of us have parkas, but we'll need another one for Kaylin if we manage to convince her to rejoin society. The harvest continued the next day, and we chose to make our corn and hay patches to rice to avoid any food shortages in the winter. Late that night, we accepted an offer from the Neutrinum Coalition to send us a woman named Bibi if she would allow a man named Sh- if we would allow a man named Shun to stay with us and learn about our culture. We accepted, and Shun arrived. For the next few days, we fell into a routine. We harvested what was left, we made more clothing, and we researched. On the fourth day of fall, we finished this harvesting and started replanting. Once that concludes, we'll continue work on our town. On the fifth day of fall, we had a Comblat supplier from the Neutrinum Coalition, and they agreed to trade us. We sold some of our spare weapons, and just took the silver. And Minoka went on yet another Sakai binge. On the sixth, we had to rush to get everything inside before the rain ruined it. Later that day, Pig went berserk and attacked me. But thankfully, Star heard the commotion and subdued him before he could hurt me too bad. Unfortunately, Peg's eyes were injured in the fight, and he is now blind. Still later that night, Viper went into a rage and tried to kill Minoka. I mean, I get that he can be annoying and brash, but still. Again, Star Star saved the day and threw her in our prison to chill out. Right before midnight, Minoka was inspired by the gods and went out and came back with Kaylin, having convinced her to join us again. The next morning... Pig started binging our Sakai tea, and Viper had a crisis of belief. Other than that, we spent the day recovering from the excitement of the day before. On the eighth day, work continued, and we started removing the stone chunks from our future homes. Late that night, when the sky was fully dark, something approached our settlement. They looked like human corpses, but they removed around as if they weren't dead. We resolved to leave them alone and hope they move on. On the ninth day, we finished researching plate armor and started researching carpets. Those will go lovely in the homes we're building. We finished our plant work for now and are mostly working on building our storage building and houses. At least that's what I thought, but some of our rice was ready and we harvested it. This winter might be a bit leaner than the last, but I'm confident that we will survive. On the tenth, we continued work on our buildings. We should have them done by the beginning of next spring, but first we need to live that long, so we decided to harvest our rice early and try to get in another crop before it gets too cold. We finished replanting the rice on the 11th and a trade caravan arrived, but they have nothing that we wanted or could afford. On the 12th day, our food concerns only grew, so we started hunting the local animals to make pemmican. A boom went mad while we were out and Star killed it in a single shot. Man, he's cool. On the 13th, a hard snow began shattering our dreams of another rice harvest before winter. However, it cleared up before it could kill any of our crops, but the situation is starting to look dire. The next day, we wondered how we would solve this problem. So we sent out a group to raid the nearby settlements around us, starting with the ruin that held information about our relic. We sent out Pig, Minoka, and Star. They're some of our best fighters, 
but I have faith in our defenses. Things have calmed down with half of our people gone. I fought off a rabbit that attacked, and a raid from Gokwelak just arrived. I'll continue this record once we fight them off. Hello, Minoka here. Donkey is dead. Everyone is dead. When we went to raid the ancient ruins, we left our tribe unprotected. They were raided by pigskins from Gluckwalak, and no one survived. No, that's what too not true. Our gust Shum survived, but he was the only one. Our hut was destroyed, but thankfully our food stores were safe. We, if I, I thought we could recover and recruit some more people, but Star's infection took him the next day. Even then, I thought we could still make it work, but then Pig went and messed with the monolith and woke something up. It got me, and I managed to crawl away. But when Pig tried to help me, it knocked him out, too. Thankfully, a man named Purr came to help us. He managed to subdue the creature, but while he was tending to Pig's injuries, he collapsed. Both of them died that day. Still, I was hopeful. I was working on converting a woman to join me and lead the world into the light, but she went berserk. I tried to subdue her, but she subdued me and bit off my pinky finger. That isn't fatal, right? The record ends here. This was found near a skeleton of a man, presumably Minoka. Unfortunately, stories like this are far too common in the history of Tanalik, but that's how the universe works. People are born, people die. Recording ends. (laughs) 